Hey, we are on to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. A fantastic chapter. It's a short chapter, 13 verses. So we're going to read all 13 and we'll read half of the verse, uh, the last verse of chapter 12 because it fits in very importantly. So here we go. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So this chapter, the love chapter in 1 Corinthians, is all about how Christian people should treat one another. Sometimes this is read at weddings or, you know, things like that. Uh, they think it has to do with, uh, you know, a spouse relationship and and it's not inappropriate for that, you know, got to love one another and all the, this list of, of characteristics of love and what love is not is super important. But the context is, and it's directly, specifically about how Christian people should treat other Christian people. You know, this uh, book of 1 Corinthians is largely about the importance of the unity of the believers, that we work together for the cause of Christ. And this idea of Christians loving each other is vitally important. And so Paul spends a whole chapter talking about that, the importance of love. So unity is important. Loving one another is important. And, I, you know, I could talk, I think you could do several sermons on this section of Scripture. But the second half of this uh, chapter, you know, the love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. What Paul is getting at with that is, after this life is over, love still matters. A lot of the things in this life only matter for this life. What you know, what you don't know, you know, these spiritual gifts, things like that, they matter here for now, they're temporary. In eternity... They're not going to matter. But love still is going to matter. Love carries through. That's why it's so important. That's why Jesus said the, the greatest commandment is to love God with all you got. And the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. That it's, it's the sort of thing that holds everything together and lasts for eternity. So we need to make sure that we have the right, um, the right priorities going in our lives. And this is something that that people still today have trouble with. They think, oh, I'm a great preacher, so I'm, I'm doing good. Oh, I'm a great singer and worship leader. I'm good. You know, I give a lot of money to the church. I'm good. But you got to love people. If you don't love other people, you're really not serving God because God is love. And the whole point is for uh, for God's love to be received by us and then shared by us with other people. Um, it's a pretty simple view, but that's, I'm going with it. <laughs> you know, if we can't receive the love of God and share that love with other people, then we're missing the point of Christianity. 
and your gift set isn't as important as your ability to love other people. So you might be amazingly talented, but look at this list. Speaking the tongues of men and of angels, have the gift of prophecy, can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, have a faith that can move mountains, you know, give all you possess to the poor, surrender your body to the flames. But if you don't have love, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't count for anything. It's, it just doesn't matter. So we need to be people of love. We need to people, be people who have these characteristics. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. So we rejoice with those who rejoice. It does not boast. It's not proud, not rude, not self-seeking not easily angered, keeps no record of wrongs, does not delight in evil, so that's no gossiping and stuff, but rejoices with the truth. So be a person of truth, no bending the truth, rejoice with the truth, always protecting, trusting, hoping, and persevering because love never fails. That's how we're supposed to treat one another as Christians. And wouldn't it be something if we did? I tell you what, the world would beat a path to our door because who wouldn't want to be part of that group that interacts with each other in the way that 1 Corinthians chapter 13 shows us that we're supposed to interact with each other. If that was the essence of all Christian relationships, I just don't see an end to the effectiveness of that. I think it would pull in everybody. Who doesn't want to be in that environment? Um, so let's pray. Let's pray that we can receive the love of God in such a way that we're filled up and then we have extra love to share with all kinds of people, even people who are difficult to love, people we need to forgive, people that uh, do foolish things. You know, let's pray that we have extra love so that we don't have to keep record of wrongs, we don't delight in evil because, well, they finally got what's coming to them. And, but all of that stuff is pushed aside and we're full of love for others because we know the abundant love God has shown to us when we didn't deserve it and we can share that love with others when they don't deserve it. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we open ourselves up and ask you to show us the love you have for us. Lord, help us to understand it. Help us to feel it in its depth. Lord, so that we can be filled up, no longer insecure, no longer afraid, Lord, because we know perfect love casts out fear. And we know that when we're in the center of your love, the center of your grace, the center of your mercy, Lord, we know that, that we are safe and protected and secure. So, Lord, help us to understand and feel the great love you have for us so that we can be whole and complete filled up and able to share that love with anybody in this world, with those uh, who have treated us poorly. Lord, we can still love them, not being an enabler, not being a victim, but showing love in the midst of these difficult circumstances. Lord, uh, estranged family members or friends, Lord, help us to show your love to them. And Father, help us to live in the blessing of having a heart full of love for others not full of bitterness, not full of envy, not full of anger, not full of jealousy, but a heart full of love. Let us live in that blessing. Let us share that blessing with others. And let us believe that your kingdom will advance in mighty ways if we do it. So Lord, bless us in this way. In Jesus' name, amen.